All right, today we're doing a deep dive on the Nautilus. We have a special guest, Lee, who is, I will say it, he's Praetorian, and he owns a Nautilus. What do you think of the Nautilus, Lee? What do you What do you feel about it? I think, well, first of all, thanks for having me, but uh, so good. I think this is a ship we needed in Star Citizen, um, and for several different reasons, you know. We're going to have a lot of uh, properties around the verse that needs to be protected that really a, a mine is necessary. You could have, you know, maybe your uh, your Endeavor parked somewhere or your Orion out in the verse somewhere and you don't want to get sneaked up on. And these mines are going to be harder to detect. And you've got two types which are going to cover your basis, you know, the proximity and the century. Um, and, yeah. yeah, I just, yeah, it's necessary, in my opinion. Yeah. Area of denial. What do you think, Space Jesus, of the Nautilus? Yeah. I, I see it as, as similar use, but, but I see it as an, not only an area of denial ship, where you're you're protecting an area or you're trying to prevent people from going to an area or funnel people into another area but I also look at it as you know supposed to be well armored and it has three three large shield generators which is the equivalent of a capital class shield and the larger shield is going to regenerate faster than a capital so it'll be pretty I would imagine pretty tanky <clears throat> and on the nose of it, you got a pair of size sevens, which is basically how you have, you know, two Aries Starfighter on the nose of this thing. I don't know how effective the side guns will be. If, you know, if, if they work like a character, they'll be great. You know, they'll come out away from the ship and you'll be able to, you know, have a field of fire greater than it looks like. I'm kind of hoping that's what they do. Yeah. But I see it as a way to go out and disarm mines, you know. Um, Land mines may or may not be as effective as we think but to be able to disarm other mines using that nemo drone that's on there that could be crucial you know yeah <clears throat> and those big guns you know you get in a fight are you going to be throwing centuries at them you're going to be throwing size sevens at them <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna, I'm gonna need those size sevens too i don't i don't know how you're going to deploy mines in an active fight and be able to defend yourself at the same time if you don't have some way to do it and that's a pretty sizable gun to do it with yeah so for anyone that's wondering as well about nautilus it is actually four centuries old it's just like the perseus that we had previously mentioned but it has been uh, iterated over time and they've actually gotten advice off the crews who ran the nautilus to instead of having more armaments to actually have more refined and to be more precise with what it does um as well as it was in the Perry line, so it was in, uh, I think it was the Xeon War, as well as a couple of others, where it debuted. But it did have um, a part in the first Tavarian War as well, so it's played a little bit of um, part in the history alongside the Perseus, but it definitely is going to be one of those vessels that we're going to need. Now, we were talking about the Nemo, uh, the Nemo mine, the, uh, the homing mine, so... With the Nemo, you'll be able to deactivate mines and you will be able to um, redeploy those ordnance with the uh, the Nautilus, but you will not be able to redeploy them with another vessel. You'll just be able to disarm them and then it would just be useless space chunk unless another Nautilus can come along and pick them up. Um, what do you guys think? And the cool thing is you'll be able to... <clears throat> you'll be able to use other types of drones. You know, we've talked about this before. You could you could theoretically put a Nemo drone on a Carrick. Yeah. Now, the caveat is you can then use that Nemo drone to deactivate mines uh, in a minefield from a Carrick, but you can't repair and you can't refit that Nemo drone. So if it gets damaged, it's just dead. But with, you know, 456 units of cargo, who's to say you don't have 10 of Nemo drones on a Carrick? Yeah. So there's some some cross-platform play, but the Nemo is specifically designed, it says, in accordance with Amendment 17C, one of the Militia Mobilization Initiative, a mine retrieval device must be present and functional aboard all armed mine-laying craft. So it's 
specifically designed for the Nautilus, <clears throat> but it can possibly be used um, by other ships. And and who's to say you couldn't put a refueling drone on a Nautilus or a repair drone on a Nautilus in place of one of your Nemo drones too? Yeah, exactly. So how space just said that as well we've we've sort of done research on this in the past when we spoke about drones and the nemos and just the different versions of drones um so you will be able to carry like a mind disarming um nemo on a carrick but you just won't be able to take those uh ordnance on board obviously now yeah. with the the vessel itself with components and weapons it consists of um, a one size three radar, two size two computers, two size three power plants, two size three coolers, three size three shield generators, as Space was saying before, uh, two times size three fuel intakes, one size three fuel tank, one size three quantum drive, a one size three jump module, and two size three quantum fuel tanks, which is actually not a bad size and amount of quantum fuel when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, it should be pretty long range, I would think yeah for a uh, military sub capital yeah yeah so it's got um on it it's got a one size seven mine dwp system on it as well as a utility mount which is actually the one um mine well the nemo drone that we've been talking about for the weapons you've got one manned turret with dual mount size sevens on the nose now that is a turret so i would expect it to be able to be bladed or um put to the pilot's use uh, it's got two times manned turrets with a dual mount size 3 and another uh, manned turret with dual mount size 3s which is odd that they place that in a different um, category of its own which because they're all the same. But um, it's got, like I said, we said, it's got three different, um, well, it's got two different sort of mines on it and then you've got the drone. You've got the homing mine which is, they say they're, good between five to ten kilometers as well as the sentry mine which has two times size two guns i don't know how effective they're really going to be but someone has put down the stats for these um, so you can have 24 mines on board this vessel and each having a dps type of a size five torpedo which is about eight thousand damage so that could be around 192 thousand damage it's obviously just theorized not really theorized but just put together as a rough figure we won't really know until it's actually out but that's just one of the things with their minds on them yeah and, and essentially what that means is you'd have to hit every shot every one of those mines would have to strike a target to get that 192,000 yield but that's your total available damage output in that minefield yeah um so with the um mines as well they say that they have a really uh hard rate to being detected but again if you got a shield a ship with like a capital uh capital radar as space was mentioning before we started if you have a ship with a capital radar on it it may be your sweeping vessel and you may be able to send that in first to actually detect those mines i have a polaris, feeling maybe the, uh, yeah i was about to bring up the polaris the polaris is this is going to be the 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 search the mine searcher you know the hmm. mine sweeper if you want to call it and it's going to be looking for these drones uh and it's going to see them first probably before a lot of other ships yeah yeah i think that's why that radar is capital i think that i think that's the screening ship of your fleet really so use going... that in conjunction with a ghost or i mean a uh a tracker or or a terrapin or something you know instead yeah. of a, a, putting a gladius on it put a terrapin in it yeah. I was actually thinking about the Terrapin would be a nice little uh, scout vessel. Everyone says it's not a really good ship, but again, it's I've been shot at uh, by 600i with size fives, and I've survived a good amount of time before I blew up. But <laughs> the Terrapin is going to be special when it's when it's its time. It's just it's just early right now. It's not yeah. really implemented as well as it as it will be. Well, it's going to have all that armor with it. Yeah. yeah. In fact, that, that might be a good ship. It might be able to you know tank a lot of the damage. <laughs> Exactly. So, so with the Nautilus, uh, it's 125 meters long, it's 72 meters wide, uh, and 21 meters high. If you have a look at it in Fleet Viewer, it's around the similar size of a Carrick. It's quite close to it. Now, with the cargo, you've got 64 units of cargo, which is actually separated and different from 
your uh, where you have your mine. So it actually does have that 64 cargo, well units of cargo for whatever you want to use it for. In the vessel, um, you've got three decks. You've got the top deck, which has a central lift, a mine depot, a mine control room. You've got the main deck, which has a central lift, a turret, a bridge, the engine control, escape pods, a mess hall, crew's quarters, captain's quarters, room, uh, a control room, sorry, that was the engine control room, a docking collar. On the sweep deck, you have a central lift, a drone bay, the cargo bay, a turret, and a mine bay. So, overall, this is probably going to feel like the carrick you're on the outside it feels like a big ship and then when you get on the inside you just you feel like you're going to get lost eventually like you just there's going to be so much room and so many hallways to walk down um it'll be pretty pretty cool to go through you're talking about the cargo space uh, you know obviously you know the crew on board is going to need you know food and supplies and whatnot yeah. but i have a feeling that you're going to need some cargo space for you know drone repair and drone components and maybe even you know, we don't quite know how, you know, uh, taking care of the mine, tending to the mines is going to work. You might have to have mine parts even. So I have a feeling that's why we have that cargo in there. Yeah. Or, you know, more Nemo drones. You know, the Nemo drones are considerably smaller than the turrets are. You can't store extra turrets in that cargo capacity, but who's to say you couldn't put a, a, an extra Nemo drone or two in there? Or... You know, you, you need food and water, like you mentioned, but but that capacity is certainly not enough to do any appreciable hauling in, but it's big enough for perhaps an extra drone or two. Yeah. So, going over this ship, um, like I said, the enemy mines, when you have the Nemo drone out, they can be stored and they can be redeployed. So, I feel like that would be a great opportunity to trick an enemy into thinking that their mines are still there, but not really realizing that... You know, you've just stolen them and they're going to get wrecked by them. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the price of this vessel is, I wouldn't say heavy. It probably would be heavy in comparison when you look at the Perseus as well. It is $725. At Warbond, it is $675. So, each way you look at it, it might be a lot, but it might not be a lot depending on your gameplay uses. Now, I know for myself and probably for Jesus and definitely for Lee, uh, we're probably going to have a Perseus and a Nautilus at the same time. So, you know, you've got you got these two different vessels, but, you know, they, two, they do two different things. But the Nautilus, as we have mentioned, has those two cannons on the front, which is pretty much like two Ares or half the firepower of a Perseus. Yeah. Yeah. On a ship with one more large shield and more range and probably I, I don't i hate to speculate on the armor but it's probably got better armor than a polaris maybe not as good an armor as a perseus but yeah. we have nothing to definitive to go by you know well with these uh size seven guns this clearly tells us that cig wanted this to be in a fleet you know they right. wanted not only are you going to be managing these mines but you're going to try to use this in a fleet battle because I, yeah. I can't see why else it would need these size sevens. Yeah. That's a good point. So, as well as, um, like Lee just said, it's going to be probably used for a lot of mining ops, uh, a lot of cargo ops, just a lot of different pirate org ops, just anything you really think of that you'll be able to use this vessel for. Now, I did look at the Q&A as well. People were asking the question if these mines and um, drones will be any good in Atmo, just the mines in specific. And they will not be any good in Atmo. So they're specifically designed to be out in the verse, in space, not on a planet side sort of operation. So keep that in mind because if you go to put them in um, Atmo, I'm going to guess they're going to try and they're just going to drop because they don't really have Crash any sort to of... to the ground maybe. Yeah, exactly. They don't really have any like um, maneuvering thrusters or anything to keep them stable um, in at atmosphere. So... Um, if you are looking at getting one now, some people are saying that we're like salesmen and we're trying to sell people ships. Now, I think we're, we're just trying to give people advice. Like these ships are going to be great vessels. And I think it's best to get in early before they have this massive price hike when they're actually released and have a good functionality within the game. Yeah, it'll be too late. You know, if, if you buy it at game release, you're going to pay, you could pay 50% more. On, on some of these ships, I'm not saying the Nautilus will be the, that'll be the case with the Nautilus, 
I think it's it's for me it's a little bit overpriced, but but not hugely overpriced. I don't know how much wiggle room they have. I, I could see it going up another, you know, fifty bucks, twenty five bucks, fifty bucks, a hundred bucks maybe. I don't know to do it'll, it'll quite reach a hundred bucks because it's 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 fairly close to what I think it's worth now. Yeah. But well, def- it will probably it goes, go up uh, some. Definitely when it goes to uh straight to flyable. Well, not straight. You, you know, when it becomes flyable, yeah. there's going to be a price increase. And exactly. maybe even before, uh, you know, when we start maybe seeing it on uh, Inside Star Citizen or something, you know, when they start hinting at it, it might jump up then. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally, they could raise the price on any ship at any time. I mean, look what happened to the Merchant Man last year. <laughs> yeah. Mine went up 150 bucks in less than a year. Well, that's so, what I'm saying, you know, because, you know, I, I watch that and uh, people speculating like, well, they're working on this. That price might jump and it. Sure enough, it did. Yeah. And, and like Baron said, it's not I don't work for SIG. I'm not I'm not being paid. We're not being paid to do these videos. It's just it's our opinion based on experience and based on the fleets we have and everything else and what we've seen as far as pricing goes. And when we do a deep dive on a ship we find that ship worthy of a deep dive and we find that there's value in the ship and value in it for the game and if you're interested in the ship the time to buy the ship is early it's not to wait until later when the price goes up 15 20 30 percent unless you just like to spend money and if you if you don't mind that that's okay but for the people that want to save a buck these are typically the ships that we think will go up in value and and they represent an opportunity now if you buy them early to save some money so well i think that's pretty much we'll call it there unless you guys have anything else to say um i think there's a lot of things you know that we could say about the ship but a lot of it would be theory craft and a lot of it would be speculation we don't we don't really know what the mechanics are going to be or how it's going to work or how we really monitor the mines or the control panels because they haven't really shown anything but i think it's just, it's suffice to say that if you're if you're interested in that kind of gameplay it's the only ship in the game that represents that kind of gameplay and and i think they've done a fabulous job on the on the, the actual concept design of it i like the looks of it i like everything about it you know I, i'd love to see some interior spaces there's not a lot of you know pictures or anything available of of what the interior may look like but just in terms of sheer functionality if they can nail the mechanics of it it should be a lot of fun to play i mean i have one in my buybacks you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring the price will go up and I thought, okay, if it turns out great, at least I've locked in the price. I've got it in my buyback so I can, I can go get it tomorrow with no problem. Yeah. So I'd, I'd like to add, uh, with the bombing coming into game, uh, pretty soon, as well as, I don't know if you guys saw, but, uh, those, uh, they, they sort of made, uh, mines right now. Uh, have you seen it in uh, Inside Star System? Like, it's got, like, a laser beam. It's, like, what do you call oh, it? Oh, uh, the, the laser mine? Yeah, the, the laser yeah, yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I don't think the Nautilus is too far off. No, I, I agree. I don't think so I either. I feel like we're going to start seeing it come around the corner if it's not already being worked on. And I, mm-hmm. I don't mean, you know, in the next patch or two, but, you know, maybe next year at some point. Yeah, I, th- I think that the, the Tier Zero bombing is kind of the 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 entry door to mines and tier you know tier one tier two bombs and everything else and i don't know whether we'll see a lot of ships with bombs in them whether there'll even be another ship other than the a2 that does bomb and i suspect there may be a smaller version there may be a bigger version who who knows what they'll be but at a minimum it opens the door for other types of weapons like that which immediately brings to mind the nautilus so i don't i don't see it being a huge window between when we start seeing bombing and when we start seeing mining mine laying so we'll close it there but if you don't watch that sisc episode with the um the bombs being dropped by the herc i definitely suggest you go watch it because they are size 10 so that might lead to another ship that has size 10 torps <laughs> um, maybe yeah but We'll end it there. Um, if you guys want to see more deep dives, uh, we do have a Discord where you can suggest them. And if you want to have more of a say or even see what ones are coming up, you can get uh, the channel memberships or patrons. But I've been Baron. I'll see you in the verse. And I'm Space Jesus, and I say peace.
Love and chicken grace. And I'm Lee. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>